you know, for you to want to continue this pregnancy is very selfish of you because the entire time that your daughter lives, if she even lives, she is going to have no quality of life. So you are going Welcome back to our channel. So today I'm back with another video. Now this is the video that everybody's been waiting for. Today I'm going to talk about um, uh, our journey that we had with our daughter Xylee. Now for those of you who don't know, I carried Xylee um, and she had a lot of complications. So I've done a video on this before. Um, the video I did the first time, it was few days after she was born so that video is raw unedited very emotional and um, it's very detailed because of course everything was fresh on my mind so if you want to watch that video I'll link it down below um, yeah let's get into this video um, before I do um, those of you who are new here if you can go ahead and subscribe and go ahead and click that notification bell that way when we post more videos you guys can get the notification straight to your phone and if you're wondering where my wife is she didn't want to be in this video because like i said um it was very emotional last time so she said you got it we went for our full anatomy scan and you know we went in there all happy i think we brought my sister and my mom and you know we just it comes in the room and her face was pale like she had seen a ghost and I, I knew that something was wrong. So she sat down and she, so I, I'm like, what do you, what do you mean my baby doesn't have a brain? And she says, um, well, our scans aren't that good. So I'm going to refer you to an MFM, maternal fetal medicine specialist who can give you a better scan and they can better tell you what's going on. And you know, she kind of just left it at that. And I was like, what do you mean? What does this mean? And she said, well, we think that well, it looks like she has hydrocephalus and I was like what is hydrocephalus and you know she told me what it was which is you know again these terms it's been a while um, but she it's something it has to do with fluid in your brain your brain isn't draining the fluid through the spinal cord like it's supposed to so basically her head was filled with fluid and the fluid if there was any brain, the fluid had compressed it. There were, you know, so basically that's when I saw an ultrasound, a black hole, that's what it was. It was her head was filled with fluid. So, um, you know, my heart just dropped and, you know, I thought my world was over. So I went home and I cried and um, I cried some more. And they had scheduled me with the specialist to go the very next day. So, you know, at, at the anatomy scan, usually they, the picture is like the baby is kind of on its back. And it shows the back of their head and then their profile with their nose and their mouth. Her head was so huge that it didn't even fit, you know, her, her little nose, her little mouth. And it was just this huge head. So I'll insert the clip for you guys to see, but um, let's fast forward. So I went and saw the specialist and the specialist that I go to here locally, they rotate. So there's five different doctors and every single time I went to them, I saw a different doctor every time. So the first time that I went, um, I saw a female doctor and you know she told me that it wasn't hydrocephalus, that their test showed that she had hydranencephaly. Now I, I can't tell you the difference right now because I don't really know. Um, but I'll put, the, just, I'll put the words here on the screen so you guys can Google it if you're really interested. But hydranencephaly is worse than hydrocephalus. They're similar, but, you know, this one's more severe. So it was the same thing. You know, she said, your baby's not going to survive. Um, and the timeline they gave me was that they expected my baby to pass away inside me sometime before 30 weeks. If she didn't pass away before 30 weeks, that um, she was most likely going to be a stillborn if she wasn't a stillborn they didn't expect her to make it more than 48 hours and if she survived more than 48 hours 
her lifespan was only going to be 30 days. And um, even if she was to survive 30 days, that she was never going to breathe on her own, eat on her own, she was never going to walk, she was never going to talk. And they started seeing me, I, I believe they started seeing me weekly, and every time I went, it was just worse and worse. And at one point, the doctor asked me, why do you want to continue your pregnancy? Because mind you, this whole time, they were telling me that I should terminate. And it just, abortion wasn't for me. Um, it's, it was just, it's just not for me. Um, I'm not God and I'm not going to play God. And, you know, I looked at him and I was like, what do you mean this is my child? And he said, I know you're a first time mom and I know you're young and I know you think you probably won't ever get pregnant again, but you will. And, you know, for you to want to continue this pregnancy is very selfish of you because the entire time that your daughter lives, if she even lives, she is going to have no quality of life. So you are going to watch her suffer every single day. And you know, I, I, I never, you know, at once I left that appointment, I refused to see that doctor ever again. You know, I still had to see the ones, but I made sure I had to never schedule with him again. But he really broke my heart. You know, he broke my spirit and I went home and everything that I thought I had prayed for and I had begged God for, it, it was just, it gone out the window. Um, and I really considered for a second that I was being selfish. And of course, who, who doesn't want to, I mean, some of you might not, but in my situation, I wanted to give my baby a chance. You know, I didn't, they didn't know exactly what was wrong with her and they couldn't determine that until she was born. But from what they saw, this is what they were guessing. If you can't tell me 100% what's wrong with my child, how can you be so certain that she's not going to live? That was the way I thought. But after that appointment, I went home and he, you know, what he said really stuck in my head. And, you know, all I could hear them saying was terminate, terminate, terminate. Um, so, um, you know, after... I went, I went back to my doctors and then they told me, you know, we don't think it's hydrogencephaly. We think she has um, holoprosencephaly and holoprosencephaly is typically linked to trisomy. I believe it's 13 and that's where you have an extra 13 chromosome. And, you know, they, they were checking my baby over and over and over because they're like, you know, the, fa the, characteristic, the characteristics of this diagnosis or you know cyclops meaning she's gonna have one eye um, she's gonna have a cleft lip or a cleft nose or a cleft palate she's gonna have webbed feet her she's gonna have webbed hands or webbed fingers um, you know they were making my baby sound like she was gonna be a monster um, but we you know when they looked at the ultrasound none of those factors were there so you know oh you know I just thought okay you know this isn't adding up so they tell me your last option is to go to a neurosurgeon and the neurosurgeon you know since this is related to the brain he's the one who can better tell you where to go from here so i went to go see a neurosurgeon and he ordered an mri for me so we had an mri done and i'll insert a clip of that and um he told me that according to the mri my baby had a massive brain tumor and the tumor was so big that it had filled majority of her head and it was compressing against her brainstem so even though the diagnosis was wrong as to what the other dogs were telling me the outcome was still going to be the same the longest they expected her to live if she survived birth was going to be 30 days you know i, I lost it um I, I just completely shut down. This leads me to explain why um, my beautiful son is five months younger than my daughter. Um, is because, um, mind you, when I'm saying my, I understand that it's our daughter, but I'm talking to you guys, so Xylee is my child. But I asked my wife if she could try to get pregnant because 
I needed something to live for. Um, and I know that's selfish and a lot of people probably don't know that. Um, but she agreed and I'm so thankful for her. Um, there were times, you know, when I would read certain things and I just thought there was no hope. And, you know, I didn't want my daughter to be born into this world and suffer. But I didn't have enough courage to make the decision to end her life. And so I thought, you know, what if I just ended my life? And everybody could blame me, you know, and I wouldn't have to answer for it because I wouldn't be here. Um, so, you know, my wife, we did an insemination on her and it took the first try. That is why our children are so close in age. You know, let's skip over to um, August. In August, I went for yet another appointment, and this time, you know, they told me that my daughter was about eight pounds. So, she wasn't supposed to be due until October. I know that they told me that she weighed a lot. So, basically, this is what the doctor was telling me. You have high blood sugar, so you're probably diabetic. You're compromising the oxygen that your daughter is supposed to be receiving. So, she, her heart could stop at any time because you are not providing enough oxygen for her. So, you have... A giant baby with an even more giant head who isn't going to survive to birth because she's not getting enough oxygen. So that day they made me make a decision and they said I needed to deliver my baby as soon as possible. So at this time I was I think I was about 30 weeks and they said I needed to deliver between 32 and 36 weeks and they forbid me to go past 36 weeks because they said that if I chose that route which knowing me and I'm stubborn I want my child inside me as long as possible she has all these factors wrong or all these issues that you say you know are going to be detrimental to her health why am I going to add prematurity on top of that you know so them knowing that I wasn't going to make the most rational decision they refused to let me go full term and they said if I went past 36 weeks that she was probably going to rupture my uterus and either I was going to hemorrhage and die or I would never be able to have kids again and so I chose 36 weeks and they said okay well you're going to have to have a c-section because there's no way you could pass her vaginally and you know it was what it was you know one day something inside of me was like you know you don't advocate for her who will so I woke up one day a totally different person and I, my wife probably wonders what the hell was wrong with me but um she didn't dare question it <laughs> but you know I just woke up one day and I was like this is my child and these doctors are going to listen to me I went and I told them when I come to the appointments from now on, I don't want to know what you think, what you thought, what the textbook says. I want to know the facts. How much does she weigh? How big is her head? Has the brain tumor grown? That was it. That's all I wanted to know. And I made that very clear. And from then on, that's all we did. We, there was no more talking about what if, who who says this. There was nothing, none of that. I made the decision that there, if nothing could be changed, then there was no reason for me to be stressing every appointment and losing hope every appointment and I'm so glad that I did that I'm so glad that I stood up to them because I was a different person you know and I felt like I was in control even though I was only in control this much I was in control and so I told my wife you know my child is not going to come home to nothing so we're going to have her room prepared and even if she never makes it in heaven she can look down and she'll see that that she had a beautiful home. We bought everything for her because that was my princess. And, you know, I prayed and I prayed and I begged God and I traded so many things in my prayers that, you know, now that I think about it, uh, I'm probably not holding up to a lot of those things, but, you know, I, I gained hope and I refused I refuse to let anybody tell me anything because nobody knew what was going on with my child but God. Um, I was scheduled to go to the hospital um, at 10 a.m. Um, the day that we were supposed to have the c-section 
it was a long day um, and at 2 at 1 30 they started prepping me for my c-section and they um, put me in a room and anyways they brought my wife in and they started cutting me open and on the ceiling was a reflection of what was going on and so I was just there you know I don't even know if I was breathing I was just so tense just waiting for the unexpected to happen you know and I was praying and you know I, I always talk to my daughter and I would tell her you know mommy's here the doctor pulled the baby out and you know the whole time me and my wife were waiting to hear her cry because if she cried that meant that she was alive breathing um if she didn't cry that meant that she was stillborn so you know she i they took her out of me and you know she wasn't crying and so uh, i started crying and you know I, I i was like you know this is it all of a sudden my daughter screamed and she cried so loud they took her away and you know I think that was one of the hardest things to go through because the whole time that I'm there recovering anytime my phone rang and you know it would be my wife or texting I thought that that was going to be the call that she had passed away so it wasn't until the third day of her life when I actually met her and I went to the hospital and um, saw her in the NICU for the first time. Um, it wasn't until that day that the neurosurgeon actually came and he talked to me and my wife and he told us, you know, there's no brain tumor and he's like, this is a really good thing. Um, he's like, I don't know what happened. Um, he's like, but the brain tumor is gone. And I think the reason why he said that is because, you know, basically I told him that we had prayed the tumor away and you know he just smiled and nodded his head because that's what I honestly think happened so you know I asked him you know what's the actual diagnosis or what are we looking at and he said that they determined that she had cerebral cerebral vascular malformation and I'll put that down below because I, I'm probably butchering it in her head now she's here I can model for you guys in her head I'm um, you're supposed to have a main blood vessel that runs right here and it's supposed to split down the back well her main one back when she was three four months um the one that's right here it formed a blood clot and so as the blood was pumping to it it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because it wasn't draining the blood wasn't draining and it just splayed across the top of her head and so that's why they thought it was with the, all those other diagnoses they thought it when they determined that the vessel that had failed um and had made a clot that it was it was dormant it wasn't doing anything so <laughs> yeah we did mris frequently and every time we did an mri that vessel was smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller so by the we did one final MRI and they said that the vessel was only five percent of its size so it, it was it's tiny so with that being said um, she's that is still her diagnosis cerebral cerebral vascular malformation and macrocephaly because her head is still bigger than it should be for her age now you can't tell because she has all these little curlies we do still see she is still monitored for her conditions um she goes to a therapy and they check her and she gets scans and you know she sees special doctors and um as of now we're just supposed to live her life to the fullest as if nothing is wrong um and you know the only concern they have is for this vessel to start draining or become active even though it's small it's still there um, and if it becomes active they don't want it to leak somewhere where it shouldn't and then you know then she kind of have some kind of aneurysm um, and the second thing is since her brain rewired its vessel she's supposed to have two back here and she only has one so she has one vessel doing the power of two so when she gets older, sports, we don't know if she's going to be able to do like contact sports. If she, you know, we don't know what head trauma is going to do to her because her condition is so rare that they don't know how to treat it. So, you know, other than that, the only other thing that I, you know, is very important 
you know, she's eating on her own. They said she wouldn't, but she's eating on her own. She breathes on her own. Um, she talks, she babbles, um, but she's not walking. And we actually have physical therapists who are gonna be coming to our house and helping her because she is going to be 16 months very soon and she has not taken her first step. She doesn't really even stand on her own. So she may not walk unassisted, but that's okay. Right, baby? See, that's okay. That's okay. See, I still big girl. I still big girl. Um, they are concerned with her talking because she doesn't say mama, dada. She, she says sounds, but it's not the normal first words that baby should be saying. So, um, say hey, mama. Say wow. Okay, that's close. Sorry guys, my camera died um, and uh, my daughter took off. Now my son's here so he may come in the picture. But So basically as I was saying um, was that my daughter still has a couple issues going on. Nothing major, nothing like what we thought. Um, and right now our major concern is if she's going to ever, if she's going to talk properly um, or if she's, if she's going to walk. So she's probably going to have a speech delay and we don't know if she's going to walk yet. But those are, you know, in the vast things of things. Um, those are minor. Yeah, she's perfect the way she is. Um, here's my sunny Wani. Say hi, Dada. Say hi, Dada. Bye -bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um, I believe God does everything for a reason. I'm glad that our kids are close in age. They're five months apart, and with the school calendar, they'll be in the same school grade, and so they'll grow up like twins. Um, He's already passing her up on a lot of milestones because he's so smart. But right? I know he's going to walk before her. He says more words than her. Um, and that's okay. Um, every child is different and, you know, we love him just the same. But, yeah, that's the story on our daughter and our journey. So we'll be updating with um, her therapy and, you know, how things are going and if she's developing the way she should. But yeah, so... You know, just some details on her birth. She was born September 15th. She was 7 pounds, 12 ounces, even though they were trying to tell me she was 8 pounds when I was only 30 weeks. They were wrong. Um, but my message to you guys is to always trust your gut instinct and always advocate for your children, born and unborn. Um, I truly believe that God is the ultimate physician. And if I would have listened to those doctors, I wouldn't have my baby. And, you know, um, I, I couldn't imagine that happening and if you could subscribe like comment down below share our videos and um, we are almost to 100 subscribers once we get to a thousand say we're gonna do a giveaway so thank you guys and we'll see you later bye